So I'm here with the VR filmmakers, a four feet blind date. This entire crew right here. And we just saw the film. It's a 20 minute 360 film. How did you guys come up with this idea? Uh, it all start when I do a TED talk in my city, Parola. And Isika Leonardon is the producer of this project. He saw me and he contacted me and said, me, I want to do something with you. Um, and that's how it all started. At the beginning, it was like a documentary. Mm -hmm. And he wants to do something in VR because he was like really into that. And he wants to do a, something about my life. And I say, you know, we had to go further and make a, a new story and create a, a fiction or talk about disability and sexuality. Mm -hmm. Because no one wants to talk about disability and no one wants to talk about sexuality. So uh, then Belu came out with us and uh, that's how we created the idea of the project. What was it like in the script writing process? Because you guys use a lot of the 360 space. Um, describe to me like what it was like and, and how you kind of formed your ideas for the project. We all created the, all the script based in my experience and my emotional, what we want to tell about the story. But uh, yeah, we don't know anything about, I don't know anything about 360, so it was a, cha a huge challenge because someone, uh, something they always tell us to us, it has to be a story around every time. Yeah. So you have to have the, the choice to choose what to see and you have to have to be seeing something relevant. So that was a challenge, but, but they, she can tell, tell you better. <laughs> Scoot in a little bit more. Okay. So tell me about the, the editing process with this. I loved how the movie would jump back and forth between her getting ready for the date and her being on the date and that kind of cross-cutting. Mm -hmm. Was that something that was in the script initially or was no. it something that you found no, in editing? No, it was something that we found in editing. Actually, the script was a linear, completely linear story. And I was really, uh, I didn't like the cuts between scenes. Mm -hmm. I, I felt them weird. I, I saw some movies before that it had cuts and I really really like yeah. them so uh, I wanted to do one shot film a uh, one shot scene every scene and the scene of the bedroom uh, suddenly was uh, 12 minutes uh, a 12 <laughs> minute scene so when we get to the editing point we had the first cut that was 30 minutes long and so when we, we were trying to get it smaller how, how to do it and one of these moments we said let's try something different let's try like cutting the the linear structure and this we tried this and we thought it worked perfectly well because it made a, a lot of freedom for the piece and also although you know from the second scene that they are going to get together in the end the tension is still there and you start to understand more uh, all the challenges that she went through to be in that moment, so this bedroom started to get more uh, like important and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, uh, and the meaning of the scene is, uh, has a lot of weight through, mm -hmm. through, the, through the movie. Um, regarding the, the previous question that you asked about the telling in the 360, mm -hmm. when we were developing the, the script, we didn't take this into account too much. Uh, but then we were part of the Biennale di Venezia College Cinema VR. Mm -hmm. It's like a mentorship for VR projects. And here we worked with a lot of, with a lot of mentors regarding storytelling, regarding technical aspects and everything. And there we started to notice that we had to think more in the space. Um, but until the until the shooting there were there were things that we didn't plan and in the space when we saw the scenario and we saw the movements we say okay uh, we had to use also this part so we changed things in the shooting um, we really tried to make a choreography around the camera 
that made people <laughs> look around the stage. So like we try to guide the the look of the, the audience through the choreography and through the sound, of course. Also. Very cool. I'm curious to know what camera did you guys shoot on, and why did you choose this particular uh, camera? Well, uh, we wanted to do 360 stereoscopic video, so for high quality camera and portability, we choose uh, Candao Obsidian S because uh, we have a lot of movement also, so we prefer to have speed than the resolution for the R camera. Yeah. Um, for us, it's like in that moment was the best camera to do it. Um, but we also have some issues in, in one of the days. Uh, one of the six lenses of the camera uh, was one of the six cameras stopped working. It get corrupted all the files. It was so, the scene of the of the street. Yeah. the one of, that she goes where the car. The street, yeah. where the car is. Yeah. We did it like we did it four times, and yeah. when we download the material, we noticed that nothing was working in, in one of the cameras. So if you don't have image in one camera, you cannot do stereoscopic 360. You can do yeah. monoscopic because you have uh, mm -hmm. enough overlap for it. Did you guys have to reshoot it? Then? Yeah, we have to reshoot it. Uh, I got uh, two Insta 360 Pro cameras yeah. in, in my production house. I I told the producer, I prefer not to use my camera. I prefer not to earn money renting my camera. Yeah. I prefer using Candao Obsidian. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we choose. But I took my camera just for backup and also for monitoring. So on that time, when we get the corrupted files, I say, okay, let's leave the Candao here. Let's put the Insta360 Pro. Uh, we shot uh, that scene with the camera, um, also the next one, the, the one of the, in the park where mm. they meet. Yeah, yeah. I noticed those two were a little yeah. bit slightly different. And uh, it's not slightly, it's a, for me it's a very big yeah. difference because the um, that rate of the Insta360 Pro is 40 megabits mm. and the Candao is 100 megabits and H265 uh, versus H264. So yeah. The compression, it's a very mm -hmm. big difference. Although both cameras do 6K, 360 yeah. stereoscopic. <laughs> Was it all stitched through uh, Mystica? Yeah, <laughs> we use Mystica VR for all the stitching. We are like very happy with the yeah. software because I used uh, Autopano Video Pro for five years. Mm -hmm. And we switched to Mystica like three or four months before doing this mm -hmm. this project and the, it's much more easier and the results are great with the optical flow stitching. I want to go back to the script. Yeah, sorry, I have a little cough. Oh, no worries. <laughs> Every, it's Sunday. It's, everyone has a cough or a runny nose. Um, yeah. It's okay, it's okay. So, we can go. <laughs> um, what I'm curious to know is, uh, I really love the animation sequences in the film as a way of like adding to the magic in, yeah. in, in her uh, mentality and her, her thinking. Was this something that was written in the script, or was it something that... She can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, uh, her decision. The, the idea of the animation was to show her feelings. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that at the beginning we, we had a, a voiceover that yes, was in the script. Um, but yeah, then thinking about it, we really didn't like it. The yeah. idea of hearing something all the time, mm -hmm. we wanted to <coughs> not to tell but to show in images. Yeah. So, in this is when we came up with the idea of the animation, and uh, we gave two visual artists that is Guillermo Mena and Florencia Cosuta, one is the art director also, and we gave we gave them this voiceover that we had, and we made a list of feelings that we thought that Juana was experiencing in this point of the story. Uh, we said, like, do what you feel it can represent these feelings or these thoughts. Um, they make these amazing things. Um, then we, of course, we went back and forward with a lot of things, but. It was like their creation entirely. Um, what would you say uh, for each of you is the most challenging part about making this movie? And we'll start with you and then you and Fuji. For me, the personal stuff, because I have to, to show or leave um, 
moments of my real life. Um, it's a fiction story, but there's so many experiences that I live every day. And the challenge to, to, to teach an actress mm -hmm. who has no disability how to move like a disabled body mm -hmm. uh, was a huge challenge for me because I, I, I didn't see myself, never. I, I just do my moves and I don't know what I'm doing. So I have to, we have to make a very hard work mm -hmm. and she was so amazing. Like, receiving of the, uh, the information and the other challenge is my first time that I never make uh, never be in a, in a filmmaking um, movement I don't know how to say it. so it was like all school for me yeah. so I learned so many stuff about the work about the team about myself so it was a huge experience um, Melis told me that they tell me that one thing we always talk about is how is so many projects talking about inclusion, mm -hmm. talking about dis um, disability or mm -hmm. di diversity, mm -hmm. but they don't really work with diversity. Yeah, like just tell the story. Um, for our team, for our work, was so important to to me be in all the process, all the decisions, all the, the points of view. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's what makes the difference because uh, we have to work together to tell a different story, not just <laughs> bring the story and tell us like, not your own perspective, mm -hmm. not living it. So was for us, it was amazing experience for, for do and for learn so many stuff. Nice. I felt the actress was so authentic that I actually felt that she was actually handicapped. So yeah. it's good job on the, the consulting slash you know, directing of her in that. Yeah, and this uh, was something that we really wanted at the beginning was to have a disabled actress, but we couldn't find one in Argentina. Mm -hmm. uh, this made us also think that maybe all the industry and also the acting environment is not so inclusive and mm -hmm. not so accessible because we couldn't find an actress. Yeah. And so we, cho we chose Delfina, that she's really, really talented. And as Rosario said, it was a great process to work with her to find Juana's body. Mm -hmm. um, she made some uh, amazing uh, activities like bringing uh, this weight we we used mm -hmm. for doing gym, you know, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I say in English, and so that Delphi could feel the mm -hmm. the legs like yeah. weight and everything it is and also poor <laughs> like Rob we were observing her all the time and she did like this and we said do that again <laughs> how you move your hand and so all the time was like we were staring at her mm -hmm. and watching all the movements to try to to take it to Delfina they also went out to the street and mm -hmm. uh, together with, the, with two chairs mm -hmm. and we went through the ramps together yeah. so she really experience like uh, finding a new body and yeah. this process for me is wow like it's amazing so well for me the most challenging parts was uh belen wanted a lot of movement <laughs> um, and to be very close to the character yeah to have their feelings and emotions so uh, also, I didn't want to be a static 360 video. Yeah. I, I love movement. Yeah. Uh, so almost all the scenes has uh, um, dolly for for going back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we got moving movements up and down yeah. in the first scene and in the last one. Was that like a telescope? Yeah. Or something? Yeah. Something company? like that. Um, Very homemade. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all <laughs> homemade. homemade. Yeah. I'm super uh, curious because it was super worked, smooth. Yeah. We work with Gonzalo Sierra, he's the creative technici technologist, and also with Juan P, he's the, Juan the Pablo grid, Pucheta. Juan Pablo Pucheta. Um, so we make a very good team for developing these different movements. So at the first scene where we are in the bathroom, uh, the camera, the candao was in a monopod, mm -hmm. uh, 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 not tightened. 
soft uh, with a rope. with a row to the um, to the sailing sí. and then uh, Juan P was like it was very funny because yeah he was just in the back <laughs> yeah. like this <laughs> doing like this it was very funny because uh, the movement has to be so soft yeah so you don't notice it and also the, the challenge was okay we got a lot of movement we can't resolve the movement but then you have to resolve the stitching and it's and not it's not easy also. to resolve the stitching when you have movement and you have very close character and yeah. when you are in stereoscopic yeah 360 so that for me was like the the hardest uh part to to resolve uh, we had like um in the bedroom also we got the dolly mm -hmm. um that was such a nice song yeah. like pushing on them where you feel like the intimacy growing yeah i'm curious to know how long was it from iteration of the script to like final cut whoa uh, <laughs> the like the first first idea came up uh, in December 2016 mm -hmm. and the first version of the script we had it like in the middle of the year of 2017 but then when we get to the Biennale College mm -hmm. uh, we have to work in the script again mm -hmm. and they gave you they give you the money for to doing it but also they give you a very short time to do it so you finish the college in March and with and you have to deliver in August so like the really final script was in March 2018 and in August we had to deliver mm -hmm. and we had three months and a half of post-production and three days of shooting and one month more or less of pre-production and preparing everything. Was uh, th that cut significantly different from what you guys showed here? Uh, the one in Venice? Yeah. yeah. No, it's, all, it's, it's the same. We yeah. only added the subtitles. And we um, remixed the sound. We also. remixed the sound, we made some changes in the sound. But it's, this, the cut, uh, image cut is the same. I'm curious to know, where can people see this next? If there's you know, folks out there online yeah. who want to experience this, um, do you have plans to distribute it on Oculus Go? Or is it going to go to another film festival? Yeah. Where is it going next? No, the thing is that this is the first episode of a series. Oh. Yeah, the, the whole series is for feet and or Metro in Spanish. Mm -hmm. and Blind Date is just the first episode. Mm -hmm. and we are working in the development of the whole series in which Juana continues exploring uh, her sexuality but also faces other challenges of modern youth, mm -hmm. such as violence, loneliness, love, abortion, like we ha want to to cover like all these topics from the perspective of someone in a wheelchair and also a lot of contact with social media and how we create our images in, in the virtual world. So um, yeah, this is like the story and we are also uh, like thinking and developing like a whole new strategy of the medium we are going to use. Uh, there are some things in VR, but there are also th some things, contents for social media and flat things. So maybe there are some parts of the story that will be more accessible for everyone, mm -hmm. and some other as this one that will be more for someone that has a headset or a location-based, uh, screenings but we are aware that virtual reality is not so accessible mm -hmm. that's why we want to broaden the the medium that we're going to use but it will be um, we are going to South by Southwest also oh, yes. after this. so yeah we have been through a lot of festivals um, for now blind date is going to be only in festivals and then we, when we get to make the whole series we are going to distribute like all together not cool. only the, the episode cool so the website people should check out though is yeah ah, the uh, website um, for, for at, feet series at for feet point Metro 20 is the, ah, the Facebook Instagram. and Instagram mm -hmm. and we have the website the website is for feet series dot com Cool. I'm going to link to it in the description below. Definitely check it out. Thank you all so much for, for having this talk and showing us this private screening yeah. of it.
amazing film. Highly recommend it. Check it out. And that's it. That's all Thank you. Thank, Thank you very so much. In, with a glass. With a glass. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>